Welcome into another edition of the Stripe Show podcast. It is a froggy Wednesday, and I'm telling you, man, there are some guests you get really excited about having on, and and this is one of them. Guy with five number one records, loves golf as much as the rest of us, CMA Award uh, Song of the Year, MCA Nashville recording artist. We got Jordan Davis today on the Stripe Show podcast. Jordan, thanks for coming on, man. Absolutely. Been looking forward to this one. I mean, come Dude, on. Man. Mixed five golf number and one music. records. Did you ever think that you? I mean, and it's it's happened fairly fast. Five number one songs is quick. Yeah, no, it, it truly. Um, you know, especially too. Like, I know we've talked a little bit about it, but like, I moved to town to to be a songwriter. You know, like never, never really thought that the artist thing was in the cards for me. Right. Uh, I just wanted to be a songwriter, and to be honest with you, I just wanted to have one number one. Like, my goal is to have one number one song. So uh we've been super fortunate and uh you know a lot of hard work but uh, oh yeah but to to look back and 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 see five number ones is uh i never thought i never thought that was going to be attached to my name so i'm very grateful for it and you know you're not the first one like cole swindell was kind of like that too wrote a lot of records for for luke and, and and for fgl and for a lot of other people and then finally one day they're like hey this chillin song is pretty good why don't you do that and he yeah. did it and the rest is history. And I know your first number one song that was yours was, you know, was obviously singles you up, but you had written songs before that and given them to other artists, correct? Yeah. Well, I'd never had any recorded. I, I had some, you know, like on hold, uh, heard that, you know, uh, rascal flats was going to cut some of my songs. Um, had a few others that were supposed to make records on other artists that, you know, at the finish line, either got pulled off or, um, you know, just didn't make the record. Right. So, which I think is why, you know, I kind of pursued the artist thing was because it was such a, a struggle for me to get my songs out. And, you know, it wasn't until I was like, you know what, well, look, if, if nobody else is going to cut these songs, why am I not putting them out? Uh, right. And that's really kind of where the artist the, the artist thing for me, or at least, you know, I, I say artist, I, you know, it's just like when I started releasing my music, uh, right. It was just almost out of frustration of like some of these songs not getting cut. Um, you know, I, I, I think slow dance in a parking lot was, you know, David nail had that one and I, I thought he was going to record it. Um, and then he passed on it. And I thought rascal flats was going to record it. Uh, so it's just kind of, you know that limbo worked out pretty good for you though <laughs> yeah i mean it I, it ended up finding the right home so i did. was okay with it it did now your brother's a songwriter too right yeah and uh really cool that we've been able to collab together on a lot of stuff uh he wrote by dirt with me um my new single tucson too late uh, me and him wrote together uh so and and it's cool too you know he signed a record deal before i did uh wow. and we've always kind of been there to, to bounce ideas off of each other, but also too, you know, you know how this business is crazy, man. Music business gets tough and it is. it's always good to have, you know, somebody in your corner and, you know, Jake's been in my corner from day one and same me to him. And um, so, yes, yeah, it, it was cool to have us both here trying to do the, do the same thing and navigating you know, being an artist and being a songwriter and record deals and all that stuff. Uh, so it was good to have him here in town. Yeah, it's cool, man. I tell you, there's a lot of really good songs. We're, we'll get into the new album and get into the songs. And I mean, there's there's one song of yours. It's it just and it's actually more than one. But there's one that really hits home for me right now is getting ready to send my son away to college. And we'll get into that. But you know, this past week, I know you were busy traveling. You said you had a ton of shows flying all over the place. There was some pretty damn good golf on TV over the weekend. I know, man. I was hating. I was missing it. Uh, you know, especially now coming down to, you know, last couple weeks of getting close to the FedEx. Uh, you know, I mean, this is like the exciting time for for golf and those guys trying to break into 70. And uh, so, and, and I know we were kind of talking before this, you know, the JT moment, man, it yeah. breaks my heart for him. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, I, I can tell you this, I really think, you know, as much as I wish that ball would have gone in and, and, and him be able to play golf, man, I think he's so close to getting back to that, to the JT of old. And, yes. uh, 
and, and I think he's about to start playing some real good golf. So I think it's, it's going to be fun to watch. He is, and I think he he re- he made it very clear he really wanted to play on that Ryder Cup team, and I can't imagine a Ryder Cup team without JT on it. He's playing well. He's just getting hot. Yeah. And when it comes to match play, I, there's nobody I'd want on my team more than Justin Thomas. I mean, that's the thing, man. It's like, you know, out of those guys, you know, when, when it comes down to Sunday and they, and they got to do it, um, you know, JT, Rory. Um, Jordan. I mean, those, yeah, Jordan. Those are the guys that, like, you want – you want to have high pressure. You want those guys playing golf in high pressure moments. So yeah, man. I mean, I, I wanted. I'll be honest. We had uh, we had Billy Horschel. He's a, he's a good friend of mine. Good good friend of the podcast. We had Billy on last week, and Billy needed a, a solo second or a first to get in. And he was leading. If you remember, he shot sixty two. His did, career did. low round on Friday. Yeah. Followed it up with a sixty three on Saturday, and then Sunday. It just wasn't his day. And anybody who's played golf, you know that happens. You go out there one day, you play great, you feel like you can't miss. You go out there the next day, nothing changes, and yeah. you feel like you can't hit anything. It happens to the pros too. Yeah. I mean, it's uh I mean, I think that's why it's the hardest one of the hardest games in the world. I mean, it's you know, some days, some days it's just not your day. And no. uh I experienced that yesterday. <laughs> it's uh <laughs> You know, you go out there, you can't make a putt, uh, you can't find a fairway, and then you have one small part of your game that is working. And, you know, even for me yesterday, you know, 100 to 150 yards, I was pinpoint, but I couldn't do anything else. And it just frustrates you so much to to think that, you know, this one part of this sport I have so dialed in and everything else is just I am so lost. And the truth is, there's going to be another day that you're going to go out there and all the others are going to come together. And yeah. that one that was dialed in is going to be gone. It, it's it's lost, you know. And, uh, you know, it, it's like I always joke about how, like, it's bad whenever my my putting is on, but I'm I'm sinking 25-foot putts. You know, right. that's uh, – I'm grateful for them, but right. uh, I don't need those 25-foot putts, you know. <laughs> right. I needed to be a little closer to the hole with the wedge game. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, we were hoping. Uh, I was hoping Billy would pull it off. But congrats to Lucas Glover get back in the winner's circle. He's been a, he's been a good player. Been off and you know, like you were just saying, J- Justin Thomas has had a, had down year, and then he looks like he's putting it back together. And it really is. One minute you think you got it, and the next minute you don't. You realize that even the best players in the world, yeah, are still struggling at times because the game just can leave you. Tom Brady arguably the greatest football player of all time says that golf is way harder than football. Oh yeah. I mean, there's no, and two, I think, you know, it's golf. It's, it's you and the course, man. It's you and, and your mind, it's you and your choices. Um, and it's an immediate, it's an immediate result. Uh, yeah. So it's like, you know, should I hit an eight or a nine? Well, I flew it. That gummit right then you knew you made, you made a mistake. And right. Right. Not only do you have to, you know, learn from that. I think, I think that's why I love the game so much. It's it's right off the bat that you see your outcome, you see your mistake. Now you have to move past that. Uh, you know, you can be mad at yourself for a second, right? But you gotta you gotta go back and, and you gotta fix it. So uh, yeah, because the next shot doesn't have doesn't have to be affected because the last shot was bad. You know, that's where the pros they take their medicine, chop out, try to make par or bogey it worse. <laughs> But we, no, 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 no. We want to try and hit that miracle shot, and we never pull it off, but we yeah. always think we can. Absolutely. It's like, yeah, well, I went OB. Now I'm shooting for par from 170 out. I can probably sink this. I could probably exactly. it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you a great story one time. I'm uh, at a professional event, and this is when Faraday was still uh, working at Golf Channel and was still doing stuff with the tour. And Tiger hits his drive, and I mean, he is left of left and under these trees and everything else, and everybody's standing right on top of the ball. I mean, you know how they all run to the ball? Yeah, yeah. There is a small, I mean, it can't be larger than two feet by two feet a hole he's trying to hit through, and these guys are standing right on top of it. And Faraday says out loud, but everybody's standing there, goes, when he had it teed up on the on the uh, tee box back there, and no but nothing, no obstruction around him, he hit it over here. Now you guys all want to stand on top of it while he's got to hit it through a two by two hole. You guys are brilliant. 
Yeah. Everybody started laughing. Nobody moved though. Yeah. I mean, it, it really is like, I mean, one of my being able to see those guys though, I mean, we went, I was able to go to the masters, uh, this past year. And, um, speed hit one just off the fairway to the right. And it was probably 15 feet from us. Uh, so we were staring, standing there behind the ropes, just getting to hear him talk through his shot, you know, uh, talk about, you know, I think he knew right off the bat, he knew his club pretty quick and then it immediately went to, to spin. And he's like, man, I can't, I'm not gonna be able to spin this cause I'm in the rough. Uh, I got, I got, I can't go long because you know, downhill slope coming back. And the whole time I'm sitting there, I'm like, I never do this. Playing golf. Right. <laughs> like, I just, I like maybe that's why I'm, I'm as poor of a guard. Cause like his thought, just being able to see his thought process through it mm-hmm. and, was just eye opening to me to where like it, I took it into my game where it's like all right it's not just a yardage thing it's like Mm-mm. all right now where can I not go all right I'm gonna right. learn all right, I I can't I can't miss left or if I do miss right it's gonna be a ten times harder chip trying to get to the pin um, but yeah that was like a that, that was a cool thing for me to to just see him you know mentally walk through his shot uh, and kind of take in all the the aspects of it. I'm not saying that it's helped me too much, but at least I sound a lot better when I when I talk about picking clubs. Yeah, you know it's funny because you've heard Tiger say before, "I missed it in the right spots." Yeah, and that's really what that is. It's about missing it in the right spots. And and like you said, these guys are thinking next shot before they hit this shot. Yeah, they want to say, "Hey, if I leave it here, it leaves me a good shot next." And where I'm like you, I'm like, okay, 140 in. Out of the rough, boom, and then I get a flyer, goes over the green, and now I'm trying to, I'm trying to just save. I mean, sometimes you, I mean, at Augusta, and you've known if you've been there, if you're on the wrong side of the hole, you can't even keep it on the green. That's what, like, and, and you know, especially at Augusta, like, you know, uh, I mean, I can only imagine uh, how hard those greens are to stick. So it's like, but you know, even my home course here in Nashville, you know, like all, most of the greens, I'd say. 16 of the holes uh, are going to an elevated green, you know? Uh, So, you know, what I should learn how to do is spend some time on the range and really work on stopping a golf ball on a flop shot. Right. Do I do that? Absolutely not. I still work. I can skull it for you. If you need that done, I got that bag. I got that shot in my bag all day for you. I got it all day, all day. Yeah. Or a little fat shot. I got that too. If you need that. (laughs) Something tells me you and I play golf very similar to each other. I think we would be. I think we would be a great little twosome. To <laughs> so we uh, we got the uh, FedEx Cup playoffs. They do start this week in Memphis. It's the first seventy. They'll cut twenty off next week uh, for fifty, and then the final week tour championship. Uh, we'll get a, a champion and the final thirty play in that one. So it's always fun to watch this time of year because guys are jockeying. But what you realize is, in a case like Justin Thomas, is one shot. Yeah. changed everything at the end and so earlier in the season maybe you've got that sunday that you're not in contention and you don't you don't exactly give it your full focus and you drop a shot or two it comes yeah. in to haunt you at the end of the year that's it you know you're staring at a 30 foot chip that you gotta sink right. uh, and and yeah i mean you know kind of going back to what you said just why this game is so hard uh you can't ever let up you can't ever let the mental aspect get away from you it's almost just as important as the swing mechanics that you're trying to work on yeah and the snowball i think the snowball too you know kind of like you were talking about earlier like those rough days being able to i feel like if you're playing well it snowballs into good stuff you know it's like you can't miss a shot or you know putts are falling to where it's like if you're playing poorly you know, it you can rack up a 95 quick. Oh, without even uh, like, trying. Like just, and the hardest part of this sport, I think, is being able to stop the bad snowball. It's I agree 100%. It good, I agree 100%. good. I agree. When it is, when you're, you know, you go out on one and you hook one and you double bogey it and then they bogey the next hole and then you're fighting just to, right. to scratch together a good front. You know, uh, it's so I, easy just to, to throw it away and be like, ah, and today's and, not my day. Yeah. yeah. And, but, you know, I related a lot to like social media stuff, and I'm sure you see this with social media. You can post something on social media and get a hundred, a thousand good comments. 
Yeah. You get one bad comment, and all of a sudden, that one bad comment, for some reason, means so much more to you than those other thousand. 100%. And it's the same with golf. You can have 15 holes where every shot has just been great, great outcome. You hit one bad shot, and all of a sudden, you're doubting everything you've been doing all day when it maybe it, you're probably still doing the right thing. It, the the human mind really is just it, it it controls so much that we don't even realize oh yeah the, this the and that's a great analogy to it you know we will we will you bypass all the great comments you bypass all the clubs that you hit just like you're supposed to right you focus on the one duck hook that you hit on five right you know uh right it's funny. I, my favorite golf thing is is Kisner talking about you know he's talking about his round and he goes you know what ends up happening is I'll stay on the driving range and stripe thirty drivers in a row and then I get on one tee box and duck hook it in the woods and I'm pissed off about it for eighteen holes. <laughs> it's true. It's but, true. I think the best thing I heard about warming up. I don't know if you've ever tried this. I've tried this a little bit. It works. Tiger said that he would do his warm up and then he would play the first hole on the range. So he would hit the drive that he needed to hit and then hit the second shot into the green that he needed to hit. And at least that way he had that in his mind going to the first tee box. Yeah. And, and I found that to be helpful. Try and hit that exact same shot shape drive that you need on the first hole, hit that as your last shot before you leave the range. And at least you have that feeling and you see that ball in the air when you're standing up there on the tee box. Yeah. I mean, that's, to be honest, that's a genius way to go about it. Probably going to do that tomorrow, but. Try it out. Now, I, I'm not saying it's going to work, but that's what Tiger said. And if Tiger says it hey, to me, it's golf gospel. That's, that's gold. Uh, you, you take it to the bank. 100%. <laughs> How often do you get to play? I know you just played in the uh, Folds of Honor Celebrity Tournament. You guys raised over, what, over a quarter of a million dollars. I think, yeah, it was a great day. Uh, had some great golfers out there. Um, yeah, but I, I try to play. I saw Jelly Roll was out there. Can he play? Yeah, Jelly's pretty good, man. Is he really? He's got, he's got a good little swing on him. Uh, <laughs> and he can hit it a mile, man. <laughs> oh, I, 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 I mean, yeah if, yeah, if he gets all that into that golf ball, it's, 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 it's going. going. It's going. Uh, Kane was out there. Kane's, Kane's a good stick. Uh, Michael Ray was out there. Uh, Ray Lim was out there, who's actually got a, a great swing on her. Really? Um, yeah. So it was, it, it was a great day. Yeah. It raised a ton of money. Folds of honor is such a, you know, just a great organization. Uh, but yeah, we played, I played then I actually played the next day. Went and played nine holes. I try to play. If I'm on the road, I, I try to play nine holes. I used to play 18. Uh, I don't play 18 on show days anymore. I'm getting old. Uh, I get a little too tired. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, most of the time it's, you know, if we're on if we're on the road, I try to find somewhere to play golf that morning. So yeah, I know most of the time you guys are performing on weekdays. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights are are, are, are your th those are kind of your work days. Yeah, and then so Monday's kind of is that Monday? I and mean, for lack of a better term, is Monday kind of like your Saturday? Monday's my Saturday, uh, which is tough because you know a lot of golf courses are closed on Monday. Yeah, I know. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Monday, you know, Sunday, I usually get in, spend the day with the fam. Uh, and then Monday I, I, I go play. Uh, but, you know, get my course, they're closed on Monday, but I, I actually get to go out there. And uh, Jake Owen, my buddy, got me a golf cart as a tour gift one year. So uh, I can I can go out there in my golf cart and still get still get around in so we like jake i like everything about jake except that florida state part and i'll let that go <laughs> right i had a feeling that that will rub you wrong you know yeah so you can see the bottom of that gator head which listen you lsu tigers have had our number for quite some time if well if we didn't throw a shoe we might have won that game but i mean outside <laughs> of that it's been a rough it's been a rough go for us hey i was a so i was a gator fan uh i know we talked a little bit about this in florida but you know rex grossman was my guy man so like he was. I remember going down and and uh, and seeing Grossman go to Jabbar Gaffney for about 460 yards in Baton Rouge one year. So. Yep, he sure did. And then we had the Tebow years that were good. And yep. I remember when we stole uh, Philippi Franks from you guys. He was committed to LSU and ended up yep. with us. And 
in, in hindsight, I really wish you guys would have kept Philippi Franks. You could have had him. <laughs> I was happy with uh, I was happy with that number nine that came down from Ohio and played. With yeah, him. yeah, that Joe Burrow guy. Yeah, he's pretty good, right? That was. Yeah. What, I mean that that literally might be one of the best college football teams ever assembled. I haven't seen one better than that. As an LSU fan, I know I'm biased, but I mean, I mean Jamar Chase and Jamar Chase and, uh, and Clyde Edwards Alaire. Justin um, Jefferson was, yeah, I mean, uh, was a junior. So I mean, was, unbelievable talent at every. I mean, even I mean, think about it. Even Moss, Moss yep. didn't even and didn't even go pro. But think of how ridiculous he was. Yep, it was a uh, that was a that was a great football team. A lot of fun to watch. Uh, I've got one of your boys on my team. Uh, I'm a huge Buccaneers fan. We've got uh, Devin White. He is Devin one hell of a linebacker, dude. Just awesome guy. Uh, but just an athlete. I mean, I feel oh. like he could play. That's a guy that could play safety, could play linebacker, could play yep. back, just anything. Yep. And your boy Lenny, uh, Lenny Fournette, Lenny Fournette helped us win a Super Bowl. So I'm, uh, yeah. I, I owe one to Lenny. He's a good dude too. Hey, that dude in college. I mean, he's he's had a great NFL career. Obviously, has a Super Bowl ring. But like that dude in college was tough, man. He was a he was a stud running back. And my favorite part is he still wears – I don't know if you've ever watched him. He still wears his LSU pads when he plays yes, in the pros. Represent, baby. <laughs> so, Jordan, what what's the best part of your golf game and what's the worst part of your golf game? And I'm going to guess that sometimes they coincide with each other. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I would say the, the most consistent um, – the most consistent part of my game is, is my short game. I'd say – 85 yards in is where I try to get to. Uh, the worst part of my game is getting to that 85 yard mark. Okay. Uh, right now I am, and it's terrifying because I know you've probably been there. I am scared to have a driver in my hand. Really? I'm, I'm totally lost with it. I've, I've been kind of working with some stuff. My father-in-law is a scratch golfer and has been kind of helping me on some stuff on my drive. And so I'm kind of in that, that odd spot of, of working on my swing and it's like to get, it's got to get worse before it gets better. Right. Uh, yeah. My teacher used to tell me we're going to have to back out of this parking spot before we can pull into another one. That requires going backwards before we go and go forwards. Absolutely. That's I, I love that. I needed to hear that. <laughs> so, so, problem but, is it takes me a lot longer to back out of the spot and I don't seem to pull into the next spot very fast yeah. either. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but no, that's definitely my, I would say the worst part right now is off the tee box and I'm, but the best part is when I have my 56 degree in my hand, I feel like right. I'm, I'm really can control the golf ball and, and stop it where I want. Uh, Unfortunately, my putting's not great either. So uh, <laughs> even if I stop it where I want, uh, I'm right. usually missing putts. But how uh, how did you fall in love with the game? What what exactly got you playing golf, and how long have you been playing it? So I, you know, my dad never played growing up. I had some buddies that played. I, I really didn't pick the game up until college. Uh, I would go out, play with some buddies. Um, you know, m mainly college golf so we'd pick a six pack of beer up and you know drink some beer and, and that got you through the first four holes <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but i think I, I really fell in love with it um after college my first year after college uh weekends we would go out and play golf saturday mornings uh, and i just kind of really started appreciating the game and then i think with every passing year um i i, I just fall more in love with with the challenge of it uh, with the mental, the mental aspect of it. Um, and, and so I, I'd say I've been playing consistently for, for probably 10 or 12 years now. Wow. And you said when you're on the road, you do your best to play nine holes wherever you go. Now, how, how, how do you figure where you're going to play? Do you, do you have like, does your manager work on that? Or is that something you're pretty instrumental in? No. So my, uh, my drummer is, he's probably the best out of, out of all of us. And he's actually playing really, really good golf right now. Uh, yeah. But he he heads that up, man. He uh, we, you know, set aside five or six tickets, reach out to a club or you know a course, and try to do a swap for a tee time. So you know we'll give five or six tickets. If they can, they can work us into the to the tee schedule. That's awesome. Um, so yeah, and really just go after courses that you know we 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 kind of had our eyes on. 
um, it's actually been really cool. You know, there is really this cool intersection of, of, of music and golf, especially country music and golf. Um, yeah. So most of the time when we reach out to a course, they know about us and, and we're able to go out there and play and, um, it's, it's, it's worked out really well this year. So it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, that's great. You know, the, the, the golf really and country music, you're right. There really is just, it, it just meshes and fits together so well. And there's a ton of artists. We just had, um, had Darius on a couple weeks ago. Darius, absolutely a massive ambassador for the game of golf through country music. Yeah. I don't think you'll find Darius without a PXG hat on anywhere you anywhere you see. I mean, Darius. they I hope they're I hope they're cutting him a big check, man. I think I they are <laughs> because I'll tell you what he told me. He did say this. He did say that when PXG makes a new golf club, Bob gets club one, Bob Parsons. He gets yeah. club one, but Darius gets club two. So wow. I, there's there's a deal in place there somewhere. Good for you, D. I mean, that, that's like <laughs> But, it is, but, but I, you know, I, I know Kane Brown loves golf. Um, yeah. I knew Jelly Roll played. I knew I knew Michael Ray played. Charles Kelly's a, a pretty pretty good player. Great golf. Uh, I've personally played with uh, Luke Bryan and Cole Swindell. Both are you know guys that are 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 very good at golf. Yeah. Um, Dustin Lynch is pretty damn good at golf. Is he really? That he really you, is. Yeah, I, I think he like played in guy. college too. He's the guy that's just good at everything, man. Come on, is, like. Leave leave something for us us normal folk, Dustin. You know, jeez. But I'm going to ask you later who the best stick in Nashville is, and I'll tell you who most people say. But well, I'll, I'll 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 get to that in a few minutes. On they say there's somebody new in Nashville that is absolutely unbelievable at golf. So we'll we'll talk about that in a few. But okay. how much are you up on the PGA Tour, PIF Live merger, and 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 just I mean, it's a crazy crazy time in golf. I mean it's it's absurd i mean i really hope that the pga can can make this right i, I mean i'm and i'm a little biased man i'm a massive roy mcelroy fan i love i love his passion for the game me too i think he's done i i think he is you know obviously tiger is the 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 leader in this but i think yeah. rory's done a great job of kind of falling in those footsteps of mm -hmm. Of truly put his game on, on on the back burner, yeah, to, to kind of be the the front runner for yeah. standing up for the tour. Absolutely, and I really hope that the PGA recognizes uh, how important that guy is to to me coming home on Sunday and turning the TV on because I want to watch those guys play golf. Uh, yeah. And you know, it's it's um, the PGA will always be my. That's what I'm be honest with you i haven't watched a live event um and not not even really that like anything other than like to me golf is the pga tour and if right. you're on that it's a legacy yeah like it's it's i still and tiger started it you know it was those it was those weekends of watching tiger at augusta or the the fist bumps or seeing tiger in red right. absolutely um, so like that's always going to be golf for me, and I really. Now, let me ask you this: You were away this weekend. You were busy. You're working. You're doing your thing. Did you know that Bryson shot 58 this weekend in a live event? Had no clue. <laughs> and that tells you everything you need to know. Yeah, like I, I, I don't. And and listen, I'm not. I'm not taking away. 58 is 58. I don't care where you right shoot now. 58. Okay. Yeah. 58 is 58. Yeah. But if it's not on the PGA Tour, it's just not the same it's just not i don't i don't i don't have any um i have no yeah I, I and i'm not checking up on the live to see when the shambo's tying or you know whenever he's teeing off right uh, you know i don't um i'll be honest with you, like kepka at the players but it just bugged me it got under my skin uh i i don't know i i, I want and I think it's 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 truly just making it right for guys like Rory that were loyal from day one, right? And they need to be taken care of. Yeah, absolutely. And and even guys, you know, Sam Burns is a guy that is from my hometown, and I've always pulled for him. And uh, you know, I'm sure he got a good offer to, to go to live. And yeah, uh, Will's Sam and Billy court. always play in the Zurich together. Yeah, like, and same too with Billy. Like, I'm sure Billy, you know, could have 
made a quick check, but stayed loyal to it. And that's mm. what I hope the PGA goes and fixes. And, um, you know, those guys need to be rewarded for that, in my opinion. Right. So, yeah, loyalty. Loyalty yeah. means something. Those guys stood up and didn't take the easy money. You know, those guys like Hideki that were reportedly offered $400 million to go. Uh, Will Zalatoris, same thing. Guys offered a lot of money and decided, no, we yeah. must stay here. And, and and there has been talk that that there will be uh, some compensation of, of, of some kind to yeah. those people who did stay loyal to the tour. And I think that's absolutely warranted. Yeah. What, um, as you move forward, now that you are starting going from being support, you were support on Dirk's, Dirk's tour, got your own tour. Now the, uh, damn good time tour getting ready to kick off. I think it kicks off August 31st in Atlanta, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Night one, August 31st. You going to get a lot of golf in between now and then. Man, I'm I'm going to just play every every chance I get. <laughs> I love uh, that. It's it's like, you know, even too. I think as the tour gets on, maybe the first couple weekends, you know, just kind of trying to get into a groove. We'll, we'll probably I probably won't play, but uh, yeah, out on the Dirks tour, we usually tee off. We're teeing off somewhere at nine a.m. Uh, right, and then I yeah. think in the headline of tour, I, I'm 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 again going to go out and play nine holes and, and try to stay sharp, you know, may go out a week early for the Mesa, Arizona date. Who knows? I mean, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Some good golf out there for sure. Absolutely. Now for people who don't know, how much of a difference is there in you being support, even, even if it's direct support on the Dirks tour versus the damn good time tour where every night you're on stage, I'm guessing you're on stage longer yeah. doing more music and also more involved in the setup. So it requires more of you than just being support. Yeah, I think, you know, with Dirks, um, you know, we do a meet and greet every night, uh, you know, and then we always try to get some hang time with, you know, radio or, you know, fan club members, uh, right. you know, kind of try to set some time to just hang. and Which is where uh, sets country apart so much. Yeah, I mean, it, it it truly makes the show feel like an event. It's not just a musical show. It's 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 a party that everybody's invited to, and and we actually get to connect and 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 hang out. Um, which yeah, I do. I love that about country music. But uh, you know, with Dirks, it's an hour before the show uh, is when that stuff starts for me, and then I'm on. You know, I'll play for an hour. And then I go back out and do a song with Dirks, but you know that's which is epic, by the way. If you did not get to see that on the Dirks tour, that was a ton of fun. That was, I mean, that was that song in the end of his show. I mean, it's a party, dude. It's and that's exactly what when Dirks came to me and was like, "Hey, man, I want you to come do what was I thinking with me." I was like, well, "Man, like, you know, are we doing it acoustic?" He's like, "No, no, 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 no. I want, I want to, I want this to be a party on stage." And it was, and dude, we just have a blast with it. Um, it is. And I just love that song. Like uh, it is, but yeah, it's like, you know, an hour on stage hour before. And then after that, I'm pretty much done after, after what was I thinking with Dirks? Uh, whereas the headline and tour, you know, we do a VIP thing. So that's usually, you know, before doors open, you know, right. people get there and we'll go play some songs you know, do meet and greet with the, the VIP fan club fans, uh, you know, still set aside some time to hang with y'all and, and get to just kind of see people that are in that city that have supported us or buddies or friends or family that are there, right. um, you know, have a drink, say thanks, say what's up. I try to take an hour before my show to kind of cut everything off and Correct. just kind of, get ready and um and then our and we play for an hour and a half on our headline dates so that's a big difference yeah that's uh that's why it's your I, name on it yeah yeah absolutely and then you know too and, and there's a lot more and not that i i take supporting dirks lightly by any means i no. mean uh but there's definitely a little more pressure or i guess you know there's just more emphasis on making sure everything goes as plan whenever it's your name on the ticket as opposed to uh to to being a support act i hope dirks doesn't hear that and thinks that i'm like cashing it in out there because no, i'm not but yeah he knows he's seen the shows he knows 
Yeah. Um, you know, I've been uh, hosting Wednesdays here on Travis's Stripe Show podcast for quite some time. And I can't tell you, I can honestly tell you that I've never even come close to shedding a tear. But as I get ready to talk about what I'm going to talk about now, I'm not, I'm not making any promises. Uh, <laughs> you've written some extremely powerful records, Jordan. Um, records that w when you listen to them, they're clever. They hit home. They certain lines have so many different meanings and it, it really is unreal. And, and, and by dirt to me was one of the first ones that, that really kind of took off and you had Luke Bryan on the song and, and the song just means something. And I've seen you perform it at your show, but the latest number one that you had next thing, you know, it is any gentleman who has had children and you've been through that process of going on the first date and meeting the girl and you move in. And it, I mean, that song is life in a nutshell. Yeah. And I'm about, and at this point in life, I'm almost to the third verse at this point. I'm like, wait a second, we got to slow down a little bit. We got to pump the brakes. Yeah. As my son's getting ready to leave for college, uh, just this week, he's leaving. And it has just, yesterday, I was riding the car yesterday afternoon singing along to that song like I have 800 other times we've played it because we love that record. Nice. But it hit me that it really is. It, even though college is five hours away, it feels like it's a lifetime away, and it feels like part of your world is ending. Yeah. I know that there's life still to be made and memory still to be made, but, man, your writing's brilliant. I appreciate that. That means, that means the world. I mean, it's, it's a, uh, you know, that came from – and that song came from me experiencing those same things that you're experiencing right now. Uh, you know, we spend half the year, sometimes more than that on the road, um, away from the kiddos, uh, away from my daughter. And, um, you know, I, I think it's that it, it was really that morning where it hit me, where she had just, just her vocabulary just got so much better. And it was overnight. It happened you know, when I was on the West coast for two weeks and I came home and I like look at my wife and I'm like, has she always been talking like that? And my wife was like, no, you've been gone for two weeks. And it just like, hmm. you know, it's, you can't slow it down. It's, uh, no. and I, I think I can say this, I've never had a song that truly has like by dirt, was a special was a special song and, and to me that is kind of what i want my life to to that that's like that's a guidebook for for yeah. the rest of of my days and next thing next thing you know to me is that song about truly cherishing every every second you get you know because you know we are and nobody's getting any younger and um no nope. and it like, goes too fast yeah, goes to and, and like, but I hope what ends up happening with me and even before we started, you know, talking about your son going to school and you were saying he's coming back and y'all going to play golf. It's like it makes those so much sweeter. It makes those yeah. those rounds so much better knowing that um, that, you know, it, it's all, you know, the, the clock's always moving forward. Uh, since we've been doing this, he shot me a text and he said, Dad, can we get one more round in tomorrow? I got things I got to do tomorrow, but guess what? They're going to wait. They, they, <laughs> gonna, they, everything can wait. We're going to get one more round in tomorrow. There you go. There um, you go. I know there's some other records on there. I've listened to the entire album. Bluebird Days is, is, is another song that if you've, if you've been somebody who's obviously loved and lost, Bluebird yeah. Days is extremely... Um, emotional uh short fuse is another song that I, I don't know if you wrote that song about yourself oh, yeah. but that's a song that i think most guys could take a listen to and say yeah you know what you probably stand to learn a thing or two from that song too yeah that one's definitely uh that one's about as honest as i've ever ever been with a with a tune um you know i i'd, I'd, I'd kind of sensed and i think a lot of that came from you know, and I can blame it on stress or I can blame it on, uh, you know, being on the road or whatever. But the bottom line is all that stuff's just excuses. Uh, yeah. And I, I kind of had to sit down with myself and look back on, 
the way I'd handled some stuff with some buddies with my wife and kind of look at it and, and be like, nah, man, like to be honest with you, dude, you, you, you were a jerk. And, uh, and, and just kind of had to take a, a, a long look at, at some things that I had to fix. Uh, Damn. never thought I'd put that song out, but, uh, you know, um, I, I, I'm, I'm glad it's kind of, and now, now it keeps me, uh, keeps me accountable. You know? It does. It really does. It does. As a listen, sometimes the look inside is the is the hardest look. Yep. Yep. It is. Well, the next song is uh Tucson Too Late. I know you said you wrote that with your uh with your brother. Yeah. Um great song. We'll obviously be supporting it here in Jacksonville and I'm have no no doubt it'll do well all all across the country. Thanks. But uh you're on tour. If you want to go uh, if you, if you want to go see Jordan, trust me, it's it's a damn good show. <laughs> uh i'm not going to promise you that you won't shed a tear or two but you know what sometimes that's what we need sometimes that's you know a, a, you know a little good cries good every now and then that's it's it's uh you know to me music was always something the ones that made me feel something were, were, were usually my favorites so it's uh, real it's, it's real, real. It's, you know it's real life so you can go to uh, jordandavisofficial.com and I get the touring schedule once again. It starts in Atlanta on uh, August 31st. I think it runs through late October, if I'm not mistaken. Then it'll pick up next year. Yep. Yep. Pick up next year. Well, before we let you go, we do a thing here called the emergency nine. We're going to play a quick nine holes. I'm going to ask you nine quick questions. Some have to do with golf. Some don't have a damn thing to do with golf. And you just <laughs> give me the first thing that comes to your mind. All right. All right. Here we go. Number one, worst shot you've ever hit. And did you break anything? I didn't break anything, but uh, I would say I played in New Orleans. We played. Uh, oh my gosh, what was the the where they played the Zeracat? Uh, I don't know the name of that. But yeah, I knew. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, we went down there. Had a show that night. One T box um, had a bunch of fans that were there that saw that I was playing, so they came up to watch my first drive and. Um, I topped it about two feet. I mean, just topped the ball, rolled off the tee. Uh, I tried to play it off like it was a practice swing. Right. It did. It did work. It didn't work. So that was uh, that was by far. I still that one still haunts me. That was, oh that was God! Your favorite tour player you've ever played with? Uh golly. Um. Jim Furyk. He's such a good dude, right? Best guy. I mean, just top to bottom, just a great, great person, great golfer. Oh. Uh, Tabitha's wife's amazing. Uh, I'll tell any, you. Anytime I get to spend time with Jim, I'm in. I uh, suffered a brain aneurysm in uh, 2020 and uh, do a golf tournament every year here in Jacksonville uh, to raise money for the Brain Aneurysm Foundation. Yeah. And uh, Jim and Tabitha, Jim has played in the event and they're always supportive. They could not be better people. They, they are they he's uh he's about as good as he gets so. yeah he'll be there again this year so we uh we, we love jim yeah. uh go to food on the road I'm, man i'm like a steak and broccoli guy and yeah i see the, i get it from outback like i find an outback and you i get a good it. old outback special or, or that's filet it. that's it filet with filet with broccoli and i'll eat it every meal if i could dude i'm telling you we, you can sing and write music but other than that we got a lot in common we, i can't do those two whatsoever but i got the other stuff well you know we hit it off pretty i mean right off the bat i feel we like did. we did we, we were we, we were already best friends yeah you know? what's your uh, most famous number in your cell phone oh gosh other than jordan davis <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> i paid manning's become a buddy Peyton, oh Peyton's yeah so. Oh, LSU fan in a vol. I know, man. It, it, you wouldn't think it works, but no, uh, we're, we're we're pals. Is your perfect day involved duck hunting or playing golf? Man, that's a tough one. You could hunt in the morning and golf in the afternoon. I mean, you you know. could. You, I mean, the, the perfect day involves both of them. But if I had to mix, uh, I don't know my. My golf game is is rough right now, but you're a lot uh, better at hunting. Yeah, I'm a lot better at hunting. <laughs> I'm, a lot better at hunting. <laughs> I'm a lot better at chasing ducks around. Uh favorite track you've ever played while on the road? Uh man. I'd say uh a hoopie uh in Georgia. 
Really? Yeah, nice. 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 Super nice uh, course, a little south of Augusta. Crazy. We got to get you out on, uh, we got to get you out to stadium on uh, TPC Sawgrass. I would love it. We got to make that happen. I, I we, would we, love, I would we are going to make that happen. Ball. Sink a ball in 17, just right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> We are gonna make that happen. We want it in the we want it in the small hole, not the big one in front of right. you. <laughs> uh, most money you've won or lost on the golf course? Most I've lost was I lost two hundred bucks to my brother, um, and we were, you know, I, I think we were playing per hole, like twenty <laughs> bucks a hole or something. That's not bad. And then the most I've won. Probably about the same, somewhere in there. We don't play for a ton, so that's like, good. I'd say a hundred to two hundred bucks. Sometimes. I'll tell you, Darius's number was a lot higher. Oh my gosh, I can only imagine. It was insane. <laughs> I can only imagine. Uh, music on the golf course? Or are you a, you or or you like it quiet? No, I I, I like, um, but like not like I don't need like pump up stuff. I, I want yeah. like uh, like we usually do, you know, like Van Morrison something. Yeah. Like something kind of chill, chill. body. Yeah, like but. Yacht Rock. I'm cool with Yacht Rock on the yeah. golf course. Perfect. That's perfect. If I'm not listening to country, it's definitely going to be Yacht Rock. And my last one, who's the best stick in Nashville? Okay. It was Jake Owen that, okay. I, that I've played with. Okay. Uh, Here, hold on. I'm going to write down what I've heard. Okay. okay? And I so bet you I, I, too, I, I too used to think it was Jake Owen. I bet you I know. I bet you I, I bet you I know what you're writing now. Okay, hold on. All right, go ahead. The new stick in Nashville is George Burge. There it is, right there, dude. Legit. Like I've heard, it's ridiculous. Legit. Um, and I actually heard this from Bones. Like I think Bones has played with him a couple times. Yeah. Uh, but. I, I like even even like Charles Jake those guys that have been top dog in town for a long time right they're like yeah this yep. guy's got us yep. he's got he's the us. deal yep so yep. yeah I'm I, I can't wait to play with him just to see it I mean they say it's like playing with a tour pro he's that good I think that's the and it's crazy because like when you when you talk to him he's like man it's cool to see a guy that good yeah still explain why Speeth and JT and those guys are that much better than him. Right. Like right. that's the it core, is. you know. So have you played with Stell? I haven't played with Matt. Nah. Yeah, he's pretty good too. I bet you that dude can thump it too, man. He, he did it because he's tall, eight. long levers. Yeah. He's tall. So but Jordan, I appreciate your time, man. Love having you on. Hey, and, let's uh, do it again man? next week. I'll do this. Let's let's make this just a weekly thing. <laughs> I'm fine with that. Uh, once again, if you want to see Jordan on tour, it's a great show. JordanDavisOfficial.com. Tour starts uh, in Atlanta on August 31st. Pick up the album. Bluebird Day is out now. New single, Tucson Too Late. Uh, I believe you'll start hearing it on radio stations uh, later this month. I think August 21st, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's uh, that's day it. we. Yeah, yeah. They will start planning here in Jacksonville for sure. But appreciate your time, man. Enjoy your time off. I hope you get a lot of golf in and uh, get some time with the family and then back out on the road. I know. Looking forward to playing with you soon. Thank you for having me on. You got it, Jordan.